Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, use cycles to render smoke in Blender 2.71. Uh, and as 2.71 isn't actually out yet, I'll put a link in the description to where you can get it. Sadly, I can't show you the website because, um, well, there's some sort of server problem or something, it won't connect to it. Um, but yeah, there'll be a link in the description, I'll make it very clear for you. So, once you open up your new version of Blender, change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. And then, while we're in Cycles Render, make sure the device is set to CPU because as of the time uh, that I'm recording this video, you can only use your CPU to render uh, smoke. So, leave it CPU, but actually, if you're watching this um, months after this video has been uploaded, maybe change it to GPU, it could work, but for now, leave it at CPU. Okay, so we have the cube here and we need this to be the domain object of our smoke simulation because if you've never used a smoke or fluid simulation in the past, uh, you need a domain object to contain the simulation. So if we were to just press S5, we'll make it a bit bigger, specifically five times the size it was. And then if we press G, Z, 4, we can move it up by four units so that it's just underneath the grid floor down here. And the reason why you want a small gap between the flow object, which will be in the center, and the domain objects, if they're too close, there could be some weird uh, results coming from simulating some smoke. So let's add in a plane and let's change uh, over in the physics panel up here, change this to smoke and then flow. And then if we were to view what we've got, oh, I've not made this a domain. No, we haven't made this a domain yet. Over in the cube, just set this uh, to smoke and then domain. And then that way, we're now getting a smoke simulation. Now at the moment, it's uh, only smoke and no fire. So let's change this from smoke to fire and smoke. And then we get a bit of fire as well. It's also a very low resolution, so I'm gonna set the divisions up to 100 and then that will really slow down my computer. So if we turn on smoke adaptive domain, it will just make it a little bit easier to render. And just for some added effect, let's add in some smoke high resolution. Let's set this to FFT. And then I'll, uh, I'll just pause the video while this buffers a little bit. Okay, so we've got this result here. Now this doesn't look like realistic fire at all, it's just the very basics, uh, but we can at least apply some materials onto this. So first of all we need to change uh, this point lamp to a sun lamp and then make sure it's sort of at a 45 degree angle, if not a little bit, somewhere around there that will do. And then if we go to front view, press Control alt number pad 0, we'll move the camera to be facing the fire like this. And now if we were to try and view this rendered, you can see that all we get is uh, this image of a cube on a gray background. If I just make the background black, there you go. All we've got is this cube. So if we uh, select the cube now, and then bring up our timeline like so, and then change it to a node editor. And if we go over to the materials and click on use nodes, then it changes it into a cycles material. And now we can begin adding in uh, the correct shaders. So if we just go full screen on this by uh, pressing shift space, uh, we just need to delete the diffuse here, we don't need that. And we need to add in three things. We need a volume scatter, a volume absorption, and an add shader, which is there, okay. Uh, now we just need to put the two outputs in, it doesn't really matter which one goes on top, but you know, uh, and then put the output into volume, not surface. Okay, and that still hasn't done anything other than turn the default cube into a big cube of smoke. So what we need to do is go to input, we need to add in an input and an attribute. And then where it says name here, this is a very strange thing to do, but we have to type in density and it has to be density it can't be called anything else and then we need to put the factor from this into the density of the volume scatter and the volume absorption and now as you can see we have this wonderful uh, cloud of smoke but you've got no fire 
So what we need to do is just duplicate this add shader and then add in an emission shader and then as you can see that's done absolutely nothing it's just made a big white ball but if we duplicate the attribute change the name from density to flame and once again it has to be flame and put the factor into the strength and you can see we've got this nice white flame appearing down here but of course uh, fire isn't just white like that so what we need to do is you know we're not just going to change this to an orange because you know it looks better but it's not at all realistic so you know we need to add in a few more things because uh, fire's got loads of reds oranges and yellows so if we go to converter and then color ramp uh, if I just show you what this does it uh, if I change the uh, the black into a really bright blue color for example oh wait sorry this color has to go into the uh, the color of the emission and the factor from the attribute still needs to be in the strength and then as you can see uh, the blue is only affecting the edges of the fire and but I don't want the blue in this case so I'm just going to leave this at black because the end should be black with an alpha of zero uh, or at least I find that looks best and then near the end but not just right before the black but near the end we're gonna have the alpha still at one make it a bit brighter change it into a red color and as you can see the edge is now slightly uh, red and then near the beginning we're going to set this to a slightly off yellow almost well actually yeah sort of beige color like that and then in the middle just to get rid of this weird color that forms we're just going to set this to a nice orange and that still looks uh, you know quite bad but that's because the, the simulation is still quite a low resolution and uh, the fire isn't actually doing anything to make it look good of course you can also add in that blue back if you want to like so sort of increase the alpha a little bit and then you get a slight blue color on the edge but it also makes this weird pink color here so I wouldn't really recommend it in this case so let's just get rid of that entirely but there you go uh, that's how you make uh, the fire material but of course when you're your fire should look a bit better than that um, this is just the basics okay so uh, this seems like it's fairly limited but it's actually not uh, we can increase the density of the smoke and the fire and let's actually just do that now um, all we need to do is just move the attributes a bit far back like so and we need to add in a uh, go to color and then brightness contrast and then if we just uh, put the factor into the contrast and then get the color output and replace it in all the densities and we just oh wait sorry no the factor needs to go into the color not the actual contrast bit now if we were to increase the contrast now let's just go crazy and set this to 100 you can see that our smoke has got a lot more dense in fact it's so dense that it's actually getting rid of the fire here and you know density of 100 or the contrast of 100 is just stupid so I'm just gonna leave this at uh, about 5 maybe even 10 yeah, 10 will get you nice thick smoke but we're just gonna leave it at 5 for now okay and same can be done for the fire just bring it down here make sure that the factor goes into the color and then the output goes into the strength of the emission don't put the color here into the factor of the color ramp and then if we just uh, set the contrast let's go crazy again set it to 100 you can see that the fire is now shining a lot brighter uh, but we're just going to leave this at something like 2 perhaps yeah, maybe 5 like the other one yeah that will do uh, but what this can help with is um, if we were to set the contrast of the smoke to 100 again and it overlaps the fire if you really want your smoke to be that dense and I would advise against it unless you're, you know, the camera is supposed to be really far away from it uh, then you can set the contrast of the fire up to 100 as well and then that will bring the fire back you might even want to set it a little bit higher so 200 uh, but that doesn't actually do anything apparently but you know generally you shouldn't have your numbers get that high anyway so I'm just going to leave this at 5 
and I'm going to leave this at 5 as well. Okay, uh, so there's the basics for you. There's a few more bits and pieces you can do to get even more detail and uh, change a few things. And you can also, uh, a nice little trick I found to uh, easily change the color of your fire is if we add in a hue saturation. Let's say you want a green fire, uh, or oh, I don't know what green is, I think it's a 0.3 on the hue. Oh, that's a saturation, sorry, no, we want that to be at 1. I want the hue to be at 0.3. Oh, and that's pink, green would be 0.7 or something, yeah. So 0.7 would make it green, um, 0.3 makes it pink, and a 0 or a 1 will make it blue. And you can get interesting effects like that. So this is quite a rubbish uh, smoke simulation. I'm just going to show you something I made earlier that uses it properly. All right, so here's a little explosion I've been working on, and it's rendered only at 10 samples because rendering smoke takes a huge amount of time. As you can see, it still took uh, well, you know, a minute to render, but um, yeah. So there you go. This was rendered in cycles. This is the sort of thing you can do. Like I say, it was rendered at quite low samples, which is why it's so weird, especially in this area around here. Uh, but I'll try and get a much more, uh, well, a render done with more samples uh, ready for this video so I can show you, uh, it'll probably be the thumbnail of this video or something. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learnt uh, stuff about rendering smoke in cycles, and it should be fun experimenting with that. Also if you're wondering if this will be a, a permanent way of uh, getting it done, you know, with all this attribute stuff. I think this is only a temporary uh, thing the developers have done just to give people the ability to render smoke, but uh, I, I'm hoping that this whole attribute thing goes because it's quite fiddly really, you know, just one spelling mistake and it's just wrong. Uh, you know, shouldn't be too hard to fix, but yeah, um, they're probably going to manage to get it into like one node or something, so that should be useful, maybe a couple of nodes, but you know. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you uh, next time I make a tutorial. Thanks for watching.